I'm terrible at remembering anything. <laughs> the powerhouse of the cell is the mito what? Man, get that out of here. But these moments with friends, this road trip in 2012, walking home alone in the snow after my third failed exam of the day. I actually do remember all these things. I remember all these things so vividly, not only because some of them hurt me emotionally, but because there was music in the background. Why are memories and music so linked? Why does some music feel like summer 2017? Or 2003? Or like seventh grade depression? If I had to boil down why I love music so much other than it sounds good. <laughs> it's that it creates a moment in time and I can be transported back whenever I want. I want to talk about why that's so cool and why it can be dangerous. But mostly why it's cool. It's Nathan Zed, and this video is already a classic. Two seconds in, it's a classic. How is it that songs I used to hate hit different now? I used to think somebody that I used to know was so annoying and overplayed, but now it makes me long for simpler days, man. Before I actually had somebody that I used to know, I get the song now, all right? Okay, I relate. Good job, Gautier. Gautier? I don't freaking know, dude. On the other hand, songs I used to love are like 10 times better now. I used to think that Lights by Ellie Golding was good, but now it's like I'm transcending into the fifth dimension when I listen to that. I swear she put crack in that song. While I was playing Wii Sports in 2006, I didn't think that listening to the music 10 years later was gonna make me wish I was bowling in that virtual world again at that age. I'd argue, hot take here, that music is only as good as the memories that are attached to it. Super hot. Sorry. I think memories can have as much to do with your enjoyment of a song as the actual quality of it. Like it can be good on its own, but the memories attached to it can make the music a hundred times better. It can make supposedly bad music good, and it can also ruin great songs for you. Channel Orange was a completely different album once I graduated from Need Her High to Down Bad University. Yummy is a bad song, but when I was singing it with my friends and we're all just having a good time, it was the best song ever. And that was one of the last moments before this pandemic. And now I appreciate the song. Not to mention that most people think that the music that they grew up with sounds better than the music that's out today. But the kids today love it. But they're gonna grow up and think the same thing about their kids' new music. And then there's the people that think that the music of the past was way better and everything that's come out since they were born just sucks. That's how you get people that are like, oh, I was born in the wrong generation. Really, Sally? You wanna be born in the 1950s, huh? I know it's not just for Elvis. You wanna sip it out whites only, water fountain, don't you? <laughs> I know you do. Don't freaking deny it. You know that's something every generation says? I hate the 1680s. I wish I was born in the 1650s. I was born in the wrong generation. Oh, yup. I got smallpox. But I get it, music from the past can make you feel nostalgic for times you weren't even alive for yet. When I hear Gimme the Night by George Benson, I'm like, dang, I remember those days. Wait, no, I don't. The Rolling Stones plays and suddenly things haven't been the same since now. Oh, wow. What? It doesn't even have to be that long ago. How am I already feeling nostalgic for the beginning of quarantine in March? How does this work? When Brad broke up with you while Hey Soul Sister was playing, your brain was like, oh, I'm gonna remember this forever. Let me associate this song with crying in the club. Music is processed and stored in our brains like nothing else. It activates parts of the brain more than any other stimulant. Do I know what I'm talking about? Who knows? This isn't Zen, not the freaking science guy, all right? Just keep that in mind. But why do you think the first thing they teach us is through a song? Right now, what's the letter that comes after L? Say it, say it now. Look at you. I know what you're doing right now. A, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, I, G. You're still doing that at your grown age. My bad, that was like an aggressive Sesame Street episode. Turn to turn right now. I said right now, man. Why do we feel nostalgic for summers that were like just three or four years ago? The way everybody talks about summer 2016, you think it was like some life-changing global event happened. But it was just a lot of good music that came out. And Pokemon Go. That's it. Everybody talks about 2016 like it was the best year. But when we were in that year, everybody was saying it's the worst year. But in reality, most of us just went through some type of life transition in the last three or four years. Probably went from middle to high school, high school to college, college to out of college. So the nostalgia is starting to hit. There might have been friendships and relationships that didn't last in that time. And we remember those easier days. This is the time when we become who we are. In high school, the music we listen to while studying, experiencing our first heartbreak, struggling to choose between playing basketball basketball or singing. Just do both, you dummy. But these are the songs we're gonna hear again when we're old and be like, oh, y'all don't know nothing about this. And it's crazy because it's different for all of us. So some songs can take people way back and other people won't feel anything for them. If you were a teen in the 2000s, this will probably make you feel something. Don't wanna be an American idiot. 
you were a teen in 400 BC, this will probably make you feel something. If you were born yesterday, maybe you're nostalgic for... WAP. If I'm really into it, I remember the first listens of albums forever. Oh my god! And listening to it with certain people ties it with that person. Listening with my parents in the car or with a friend. Natasha Bedingfield is unwritten? That's you now. Feel the rain on your skin. I will never forget the first day I heard The Life of Pablo. We were trying to put up the live stream. He was live streaming it from freaking Madison Square Garden. The live stream wasn't working. We heard like little snippets of when it was going in and out for Ultralight Beam. Chance was on there. We're like, screw it. We're gonna run to the dorm. We're running. We're running. Put my phone up to my ear while we're running across the field. And I just hear. And I literally turned to everybody out like, Metro Boom is on this! We're like, ah! And we ran to there. Bro, I'll, that's a memory. I'm sorry. That's that's in there forever. I have these playlists that I make every time I go somewhere where I add songs that I hear places that people introduce to me. Songs I just listen to while I'm there. And then months or even years later, I can go back to that playlist and it's like, I'm back there. I see certain songs on there. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the song that was playing in that restaurant in Atlanta. Or this is the first time I heard this song and it defined my entire VidCon trip. Whoa. When this random girl showed me this song and I'm like, yo. Shorty. It was a good day. When I went to the UK and they were putting me on some UK music. <laughs> when I was listening to Graduation on my actual graduation day. And then right after that I had the songs from that night. When we were out for the last time in college. In 2020 it was like, oh yeah that's the song I listened to in the living room. That's the song I listened to in the basement. That's the song I listened to while I was on the couch. But it still did help it feel like less of a blur. And I feel like with a picture or video I'm just looking at me there. But with a song I can close my eyes and actually be there. Memories I completely forgot even existed existed are coming back because of the music playing. Music is even used to help treat Alzheimer's patients combat memory loss. They can go from not remembering anything to recalling their childhoods and lyrics they haven't heard in years. This hard part keeps me happy. It keeps me from crying. And when I'm upset, all I have to do is take out my music and it soothes my nerves and I go fast asleep. So that was all why nostalgic music can be amazing. Now for why it's dangerous. But still pretty cool. I always see this, but people get stuck in the past and refuse to make new memories with new music. When somebody drops a new album, it's like a blank canvas that you have to kind of fill in, you know? You have to create new experiences with it. It's not going to compare to the last album they dropped where you had three years of time with it. People like to judge music as soon as they hear it and it's like, did you even make any memories to this, bro? I feel like this ruins the relationship between artists and fans because the fans only want them to sound like their old selves. They want the same music that they already have a ton of nostalgia for. And now the artist just becomes stagnant because they're stuck trying to create the same thing again, but it's impossible. It can never come close. It can't compare. The new stuff doesn't hold that same nostalgia yet. It's crazy how the songs of today are gonna hit like crazy in 10 years. You can think of like the most annoying overplay song, like for example, like God's Plan. I'm not trying to hear God's Plan right now, but in 10 years, bro, that joint's gonna go crazy. In 10 years, when I'm in my 30s, thinking about my 20s, bro, and God's plan comes on, come on. That's why it's interesting to me when people say, I prefer the old Drake to the new Drake. I mean, I get it, but people forget that eventually new Drake is gonna become old Drake. If you're nostalgic for those days, eventually you're probably gonna be nostalgic for these days. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Artists like Drake, The Weeknd, Dua Lipa, and Amy Winehouse have all been able to infuse nostalgia into songs you're hearing for the first time. These songs channel old sounds into new ways. Dua Lipa's new album is literally called Future Nostalgia. Like, that's beautiful. I love it. It's important to move forward and make new memories with new music. It's a don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened type beat. If these albums are the soundtracks to our lives, you don't judge a movie based off the, the first scene soundtrack. Like, you gotta let it play out. I don't know if that made any sense. Hey look, sometimes it's just booty, okay? But other times it's just not what you expected based on what you already got before. And I don't think that's what art needs to be based on. It should be allowed to switch it up. But that's just me, all right? What about you? What song or album makes you feel all tingly inside? That takes you back, that makes you feel the most nostalgic? Let me know in the comments down below. Y'all have been really supporting these music related videos. I posted the first one thinking no one is gonna mess with this. The Lost Art of Album Sequencing. What is this, a friggin' Indiana Jones title? But you guys have been resonating with them and it just makes me happy. A lot of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed so if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. It's 2021, got more stuff coming this year, more stuff like this, other stuff. About to start streaming soon. Look at all this equipment, all right? I'm excited. This has been Nathan Z, NZ, Nathan Nolan, the Remy Ratatouille of YouTube, with another classic, Deliver.